In this video, I am going to show you how you can figure out, lay out, and cut a hip for a hip roof without a framing square and without any complicated, I should say, math formulas. But you're going to need to have some common rafters for this to work. And I'm going to put a link here to a video that I already made on how to figure out the common rafters with uh, an extremely easy method. And I'm hoping that this is going to be easy. And if it isn't, then at least I'm hoping that it will be helpful for some of you who have a difficult time figuring out roof framing components like roof rafters and hips. Now in this example we are going to be working with a 20 foot by 20 foot building and since the building is going to be square I'm going to go ahead and draw two lines down the middle and then I'm going to connect four vertical lines to each one of them. This is where our common roof rafters are going to go. Common roof rafter is going to go in the middle. And I also need to point out that the roof rafters, you're going to need two of them that are going to connect together and then two of them that are going to be an inch and a half smaller or three quarters of an inch smaller on each rafter. And that'll make a little more sense uh, here in a few seconds. As we position the common rafters, we're going to start with the first two that meet together and we're going to place them in the center. And you can see here where the center line comes up, our rafters are an inch and a half wide. So to figure the center, we're going to need to go three quarters on each side for the rafters to be positioned in the center give you an idea here the center right there all four of the common roof rafters are going to be positioned in the center here since we are using a square building next up let's go ahead and install our other two rafters and everything again in the center now if this building was rectangular shaped let's say it was 10 feet longer then you could use the same method and I might even make another video on it anyway, but you could use the same method. It's just the only difference would be that there would be more common rafters and the ridge would be about 10 feet long. And again, I'm, I don't want to get off track of what I'm showing you here, but I decided to throw that in there. So here you can see where the rafters are connecting. The two other rafters we cut that were an inch and a half smaller. We left that space so that they could connect to the rafters that connected to each other and of course our hips are going to be connecting to the center point here so by using this method and centering everything we've created a center point that we can measure from the outside corner of the wall framing plates to the top of the ridge and I've done this plenty of times instead of figuring the hip for a project. I actually had to cut a couple of large glue lamb beams where I couldn't be wrong. I couldn't make any mistakes. So I chose this method here and everything worked out great. So again, center point, corner here, corner on the bottom. Not too difficult. We're going to measure this line and transfer that measurement to the hip when the time comes. Another common practice in construction for roof framing is to have the hips a little larger than the common rafters. And here we're using 2x6 for the common rafters and we're going to use 2x10 for the hips. And uh, sometimes you even need to double them up. I'm not providing you with the engineering information in this video, just providing you with a few um, or with a couple of methods you might be able to use to cut a hip and figure it. So another thing I need to point out is that the tail, the rafter tail extension for the fascia board to create the eave for the roof framing usually needs to be a little longer. It's hard for me to provide you with the exact measurement. So I'm just going to go with three feet here for the tails to make it sure it's long enough. Now this is a common mistake people make. So if you're not sure, go a little longer. Don't go a little shorter, otherwise you're going to have problems installing the fascia board. And of course, since we're not going to be using a framing square, 
we are going to need to cut a square board. Each one of these corners will need to be at a 90 degree angle. A lot of times you can just grab a piece of scrap plywood and measure the um, four inches here, for example, because our roof is a four and 12 pitch. If you had a six and 12 pitch, then you would make this six inches, but the 17 inches isn't going to change. Once you have your square block here, you're gonna be able to use it instead of a framing square. And again, that's the whole purpose of this video is to make things a little easier. Next up, we are going to need this measurement here. This is gonna help us cut the seat cut on the hip. So measure this distance, and for example, here we're using six and three quarter inches. Your number could vary or be different. Don't get stuck on that either. I know a lot of people, hey, wait, mine's not six and three quarters. Then you're simply going to angle it like this. You're, it's not too difficult. You have a square board, you're going to connect it to one side. You can see what we did here. One corner is connected to this side. The other corner is connected to this side. Not too difficult. And then we're going to try and line it up in this area here. Then you're going to draw a line and this line needs to go all the way up. I'm not saying that um, you're going to be using all of it, but it's not a bad idea to have this line go all the way up so that you can measure from this point to this point, you're six and three quarter inches. Not too difficult, right? Six and three quarter inches. This is going to provide us with the next line. We're gonna come here, you can make a mark with your pencil as a reference point so that you can move this block here into position as shown here, and then you can draw a line here. And this is going to give us our seat cut because our seat cut is now going to be from here down to here which you'll see here in a few seconds not too difficult we now have a seat cut we're going to use this point here and you can uh, sometimes you can put a screw in here or drive a nail in here hook your tape measure over this your tape measure usually has a slot in front piece that you use to hook over the lumber when you're measuring it if it has a slot then drive a nail in here hook the tape measure over the slot and then measure the distance here so not too difficult again this is going to be the same measurement that we had up here in the corner, what you're measuring. You're going to measure to the point, make a mark here, and then we're going to use that mark to figure out the top of the hip. So you can see here it's starting to come into play here. We have the bottom. Now we're going to work on the top. And we are simply going to move the board from down here to over here. And again, we can see right here is the angle. This angle here is going to be the same angle as the top of the hip. So another thing I need to point out is if you're using a framing square, you can flip the framing square over in the same manner you can these blocks. So here we have it uh, on down here and then up here because we're not going to be able to get our measurement from this angle. I'm not saying we can't. You would just need to put a straight edge here to um, find it, but no biggie. You just flip it over, line the angles up at the top, and you are done. Now, after you have drawn the line, I need to point out that the line that you drew here, the line that we were using for our measurement, is going to be at the top corner. We're going to need to come back three quarters of an inch. Now, what I'm doing here is coming back the half of the width of the uh, materials we're going to be using for the hip to get our 45 degree angle. So here, if we have three quarters of an inch to the center, we're just simply going to come off over here three quarters of an inch and then draw another line. And then we'll cut that at a 45 degree angle. So I hope that makes sense. So in reality, you don't need to draw this line. I drew it as a guideline, and I always do whenever I'm laying something out. I draw this 
And then if this is the line I'm going to cut, I just simply put a couple of squiggly lines in here with my pencil to make sure that I don't cut this one accidentally, even though it wouldn't really matter if I cut this accidentally. I've just come back and cut this one here again. So there we go. There's our hip seat cut and the top. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the bottom here. We are using a 2x8 and we have 2x6 rafters. We're going to need to rip the tail down to five and a half inches. Now you can always make it smaller or a little longer, whatever you want um, to do here, just as long as the fascia board um, works out. The reason why we're cutting it smaller is so that our rafters aren't exposed at the bottom. Our fascia board should be longer than our rafters. So we could always use two by eight for our fascia board or even two by six if we had, um, this was five and a half inches, but it wouldn't be a good idea to use two by four. So we are going to cut this line here and then come up and then cut this one here. And that will be the bottom of the hip. And again, for the top, I got rid of the line so that it might make a little more sense. Cut our 45 degree angle on this side. Cut the bottom of the hip here. Then we're simply going to flip the board over so that we can cut the other side of our hip. So not too difficult. Cut our 45 degree angle there. And that is it. Our hip is done. Next up, let's go ahead and put our hip into its position. And everything fits nice and neat here. The bottom seat cut and of course the overhang here. This doesn't seem to be a big concern to structural engineers. I know it is for the roof rafters, but um, I can't tell you how many buildings I've built like this where this part of the hip is unsupported. And again, this isn't engineering information. You'll have to get that from an engineer if you build something and you have an issue like this that is a concern of yours. So there it is sticking past. Take a look at the top and I left the string or the line here that we had to measure. I just kind of left it in here. You can't see it because the rafter is covering it up, but you can see everything's fitting nice there. Another view of it. Now I need to point out that you could easily run into this problem. The most of the time the hips need to be lowered. We used to lower the hips about an eighth of an inch. Now, um, I measured this right here and it was about a sixteenth of an inch. And um, so I just dropped it 16, a sixteenth of an inch. But if you come to a situation to where the corners of the hip are sticking up a little bit, then it wouldn't be a bad idea to lower the hip. And of course, I lower this on the computer model. And you can see here where it's lowered and it's kind of coming into this. But that's not going to be a problem because I'm just going to remove it. So this line on the hip, you might need to drop it. And again, that's what we used to refer to it as dropping the hip to make sure everything would work out. So it's kind of hard to imagine because you think, wait a minute, I got this measurement here, the six and three quarters. Well, this one here should work, but it's off just a little bit. I haven't really taken the time to figure out what the deal is, why it, uh, why it matters, but um, it does. And if you don't cut it, you put everything in and you don't drop the hip, it's just going to create a little bit of a problem for your fascia board. So it's not going to be the end of the world. Now that is it for this video. I hope it helped. And um, if you got something out of it, don't forget to hit the thumbs up button or leave a comment and let us know that you enjoyed the video.